Hey guys, it's Amber Manley with Behind the Alley, and I have the honor of being in front of Andrea Busby. We're here at her ranch, Busby Quarter Horses in Weatherford, Texas. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks for coming. Yeah, so you're a big sponsor with uh, Diamonds and Dirt, which is coming March 5th through the 11th. Yes. How long have you been involved with that? Um, I think we did our first sponsorship four years ago, maybe, our okay. first big sponsorship, and then... Um, you know, we've always been involved in some level. I think um, what Christy does with Canines for Cops and um, has always been a big draw for Jeff and I, and um, that it's it's not it's giving back in some way. So Andrea, you guys, let me fill you in. Bless her heart; she's emotional. So let's talk about this incredibly tough year, and it's okay mm -hmm. to show the authenticity of you because this is not. <laughs> We met actually um, at the WPRA finals, yeah. my very first year of doing Behind the Alley, and I remember interviewing you, and kind of new to the industry and not yeah. knowing, you didn't have a bad interview, it was just, I could sense there was like some stuff going on, and I remember messaging yeah. you saying, hey, I think I'm going to catch you at a different one, it, it was a great interview, it just wasn't, yeah. you know, like the energy, you know, and you were so polite, you didn't say anything, and you're like, I think that's a great idea, you know. <laughs> um, let's talk about, let's talk about your year. Um, you've had some great losses and some major struggles, and I don't think a lot of people know what you've been through, Andrea. Um, you know, Canon for Cops, let's start off with that. You have a dog that you... Um, oh my gosh, <laughs> you had a dog that you loved to pieces for over 10 years, yep. it was a protective service dog, yep. so that's kind of, what, that's part of the reason why I came in for Cops for you, you always want to be a part of that, but tell us yeah. about, about that, I mean, it, overall the year together. <sighs> well, um, I was rodeoing a lot, hard, um, thought about the 4th of July, I'm like, I, I got this, I, I got the, you know, I think I can make the finals, and then, um, Sky got hurt. Uh, she got cellulitis in a hind leg. She burned her leg and at the short round in Greeley, and kind of from there things kind of started unraveling a little bit, I guess you could say. And I was, I think by the time you got to me, I mm -hmm. was exhausted. <laughs> and, uh, the year was over, but um, then kind of just some, it just kind of kept going downhill a little bit for us. Um, Sky died on November 29th um, from a sinus infection that was bizarre and um, from there then my dog that was my loyal, faithful, been everywhere with me for 10 years um, died January 11th and then my husband was diagnosed with throat cancer on February 20th when we were at San Antonio for the rodeo. So, and then six months later, Charm fractured her pelvis at our first run back post-cancer, and we lose her. So yeah, it's been a long, hard year. Yeah. For sure. Well, there is some good things that are happening here yes. at Busby Quarter Horses. Um, yes. Tell us about the, the adventure with uh, Tanner Equine. Well, that's it. Well, first good thing is my husband's Cancer oh, free. Yes, cancer and free. And back to going and blowing and 100 miles an hour. And um, He's also a spokesperson now. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're um, quickly becoming kind of the face of head and neck cancer um, and trying to educate people on, you know, it can, it's, it's coming and it's, it's, uh, um, it's increasing rapidly. Mm hmm and trying to get people educated on how and why and getting your kids vaccinated. And and one out of four survive once the diagnosis is given. Well, um, they give you, you know, for head and neck, for HPV-related throat cancer, there's an 80 to 90% survival rate. So that's really good. The treatment process is horrific and hard. And um, some of that, st the, the um, people that do die actually just die from the treatment alone that it's it's so hard but um he's doing well and we're very very blessed very thankful god had it we just it was scary and you guys made it to go rope together at the championships up yeah, in vegas i never roped with him <laughs> i'd never dallied in my life i didn't want to didn't 
that I was like, oh, no, I'm good. I like my fingers too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I uh, thought, I, I was so naive going into this. I was like, oh, well, he's sleeping from his cancer treatment. I'm going to learn to rope and surprise him because that's, you know, he's like, please, you know, he's wanted me to rope with him for 10 years. And I'm like, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll just ride my barrel horses. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, there was no learning to rope while he was sleeping. I, it was much, uh, there was, he was way more sick than I thought he was going right. to be. And so that didn't happen. But as the week we recovered, you know, we, I obviously wasn't rodeoing and he was trying to get stronger and get off his feeding tube. And, um, so we were both home. And so I did learn to rope last summer and learn to dally. And I, maybe because they entered me at Oklahoma City in <laughs> Vegas, and I was like, "Oh, I wish sure this is a good idea." I don't, I don't know about this, and um, so uh, maybe it kind of pushed me to, forced me to learn it faster than I probably would have had they not entered me. But um, yeah, so the very first time we ever wrote together was Oklahoma City uh -huh. U.S. Finals, first year. I think we were eight point four. Okay. Yeah. So. We didn't win a damn thing, but it was, <laughs> it was the principle. Yeah, it, I mean, what that signified was huge for us, and sure, so awesome. And you know, when Jeff was, got diagnosed, um, our his surgeon kept saying, "Plan, plan for the future. Don't you know?" I th I think that was their way of saying, you know, you mentally. Jeff called it mental warfare. Like you have to beat this mentally, not just physically. So he planned to rope in Oklahoma City. He planned to rope in Vegas. You know, he decorated, he planned actually one day, I think I didn't take him to chemotherapy. Um, a friend of ours, Danielle did, and uh, he made her stop. This is in May when he was pretty sick still at the florist in Weatherford. And Matt, he scheduled to have our home decorated for Christmas, put our Christmas tree up, put wreaths up, without me knowing so November he had the whole date because it was before we were leaving to go to Vegas that they were gonna decorate our house so I mean he he was he was planning to be there and planning to be better and so um, that was pretty special and then to get to go to Vegas and rope together and I caught <laughs> I think most of them I'm not but the two members want you to like rope them in a row that's yeah. that, that's <laughs> That's how this work goes, right? Yeah, yeah. That third, three in a row. I was like, ah, oh, those do two in a row. We have to go again. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you've got a great uh, breeding program here. I'm not trying to take you off of Jeff, but um, you know, it certainly helps having the great pedigree here. Uh, Blazing Jetalina has been doing wonderful. His offspring have been, you know doing astronomical things um yeah. tell us about blazing jetalina and, and how he's doing oh he's great we're so proud of him um i'm so proud to kind of be a part of him you know i don't um it's, he's not just a, a stallion or a pasture pet he's family. oh no yeah and uh just to kind of see it come in full circle is is so much fun you know i think i feel like we've put a lot into the industry um, for a long time and um, to kind of see it those cults that we raised and from the time you put them on paper to think about it and get the embryo out of something and get it on the ground and get it healthy to through then you know by the time it's broke and it's still sound alive and <laughs> <too well. laughs> okay. and then you get to a trainer and you know the um we're having some success this year and um it's been it's really fun to see it come full circle and, and jed's been good for he's been an amazing stallion for a long time mm -hmm. you know um we bought him before christy laughlin qualified for the nfr the first time um and since then you know she qualified three times on she's a blazing move um, he's had three NFR qualifiers. Um, I think he's, he's closing in on the $2 million mark of money earners. So, so it didn't just happen overnight. Sure. Yeah, he's been good for a long time, but I feel like, uh, 
especially this year with this fraternity cult, it's kind of doing really mm -hmm. well. Um, kind of puts him on an, on another level. I think there's stallions that, you know, he was great himself, mm -hmm. so he was a proven performer, and and he's for sure absolutely a proven producer, no doubt about it. So, you know, with uh, Diamonds and Dirt, that's one of the largest direct payout futurities, that $100,000 check. And Christy and I were talking, because, you know, I'm so stuck in my little bubble of jackpotting, and so everything, the futurity, I just know futurity, derby, and then I'm like, what's the age cutoff again? And everyone laughs, but um, it's amazing what she's done, I think, in a sense that sometimes that one paycheck sets that futurity trainer up to have some, some an opportunity to sit back, take a deep breath, and plan out their year with no pressures. And by you guys coming in as a sponsor, it's it's huge. It's y'all's perfect way of saying, we want the fraternity role to continue on and to do well, and we want to help these trainers. And um, what's your thoughts on that? Um, the girls that, and guys that train for a living, like that's a hard way to make a living. It, it is. Um, absolute respect for him and I feel like we've got awesome people riding for us right now and they're every single one of them bust their butt you know it's um, my dad you know I grew up on a ranch and he would always like, going out to feed when it's blizzarding out you know we're in Wyoming he's like the cows don't know it's Sunday well right. it's kind of the same thing for these girls and guys that um, they don't get a day off no and um, the Yes, they get their monthly paycheck for training them, but it goes to the horse. It's yeah, not like they've got the extra funds to Yeah, that's you know, so if they can make a payday like a diamonds and dirt a hundred thousand dollars and granted they're splitting some of that with us, which is great for us too. I mean Yeah. You know, we don't there's not um a lot of money in it for the owners necessarily either unless you plan on selling that horse at the end of the year or you know they win that so it, it's it's good for both yeah yeah well where what are your plans for 2018 I mean I know it's already January but do we expect to see you back in the WPRA circuit or are you gonna take your time with everything that's going on and you and Jeff just like what's the plans huh we wake up every day now okay. excited to see each other <laughs> and just um yeah you know yeah we're gonna rodeo he's roping he's doing great um i'm running barrels and if that week yeah i'm gonna enter and if it works it works and i think we have a whole different outlook on it and um if it's good for us, we'll keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about your ranch here. It's beautiful. I pulled up and was like, I should take pictures. But I always <laughs> respect everyone's privacy too because you're kind of right off the highway somewhat. And so I'm like, well, I'm not going to take your pictures. But it is absolutely stunning. Well, so um, tell us a little bit about it. Um, Jeff and I, let's see, he been out here 10 years now. Okay. And... Uh, a lot of this that you wasn't here so there was only you know the covered arena wasn't there um, there was a few turnouts and that was it so it's 10 years in the making of putting it together and building it as you can and putting little pieces of land together and now the marriage and the foals are over further away and as they grow up and get older you know they kind of start moving towards the training facility and um, so, you know, it's just kind of been a work in progress, and now Tanner Equine's here, and mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. So, it's, it's just a work in progress. Well, you've got a great place, great plans, big future, and I'm so excited that Jeff has, uh, you know, made everything through, and I, I pray for you guys, and... That's the, all you can ask for. <laughs> People's prayers. You for got sure. it. Yeah. Well, I'm so happy that he's a spokesperson because you guys are very honorable people. So. Well, thanks. You're welcome. Well, I certainly appreciate your time, and thank you so much for having me out here. And I look forward to seeing you at Diamonds and Dirt. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I remember meeting Jeff. It was very big, but I can't <laughs> wait to give him a very big, sincere hug because uh, the quality of life is, 
can be taken away in a heartbeat and yeah. he's a miracle so yeah i can't wait sure. to sit there and know him on a different level of respect so yeah all right well, thanks for coming yes it's so pretty <laughs> <laughs> well we certainly appreciate your time and we'll look forward to seeing you behind the alley